Are you a fan of mashing those miles, crunching those hill climbs, and just putting in those big epic days, but find yourself well, walking like John Wayne afterwards for about three days? Well, chances are, if you answered yes to any of those, then your setup is slightly wrong. So today, I have got five great tips to help alleviate that sore butt. Let's start with where that bottom of yours is perched. Yes, saddle and saddle choice. Now there is a ton of saddles out there to choose from. Shopping around to see what's best and what will work for you is strongly recommended. A lot of manufacturers out there will have a sizing and fit guide on their website to help take a lot of the guesswork out of it. Things like hip width and sort of body sort of positioning, if you like, can help pinpoint what sort of saddle you may roughly need. But a lot of manufacturers will go that step further and actually in local bike shops have demo saddles that you can take away and try for a few days at a time. Now, obviously due to certain anatomical differences, men and women have different needs from a saddle. That's not to say you can't try different ones though. I know a lot of girls who use men's saddles. I also know a few guys who use girls' saddles purely because the fit works for them. It's really about finding what's best for you and what's gonna alleviate any pressure points. Once you have found that hallowed saddle that fits and works perfectly for you, a great tip is actually to buy a couple of them if you can. Now, down the line, manufacturers may stop making a certain saddle, but you've just found the right one. So having a backup one afterwards, well, that can be a great little thing to have stored away in the shed. Once you've found that hallowed saddle, then you've found and tried tons and tons and tons. You've lost count of how many you've tried, but finally, you've got the one that works for you. Let's next talk about what's gonna to touch it, your booty, and more importantly, the chamois that's gonna be in between that and the saddle. Let's take a gander at chamois then. What actually are they? Well, the chamois is the padded bit inside your bib shorts or your bib liner, uh, which is actually made from certain foams. Now, generally the cheaper the chamois, the simpler it is. So just a single layer, single density foam. Once you start spending more, which personally I'd recommend, uh, but you pay for what you get, I often believe, you start looking at things like antibacterial, uh, multi-density foam, so firmer and thicker in certain areas. The cut will also be different and slightly better and possibly more shaped for your body. As with saddles, men and women, like I said, are different shapes and sizes. So there are different specifics for each person. So shopping around really, again, makes a huge difference, finding one that might be right for you. You can spend a fair bit here on a chamois. So it's really worth thinking what you're actually gonna get out of it and what you're gonna use it for. If you're just putting an hour in here or there and going on quick casual rides, then spending a ton of money on one probably isn't worth it. However, if you are putting in some serious saddle time and some big day long rides, then I would strongly recommend from experience that a better chamois uh, is well worth the investment. Saddle check, chamois check, but what can we add next? Chamois cream. If you've not heard of chamois cream before, it is a type of cream. No, not something you have on your apple pie or dessert or anything like that. That's just disgusting. It is actually something that you can either apply to the chamois directly or to those delicate areas of yours. It's great for reducing chafing and the potential of getting saddle sores and does this by helping sort of minimize and eliminate friction on the pad itself. That'll allow things to move, should we say, a little more freely down there. But let's just say when you're applying the stuff, once you've taken a scoop out and applied it, don't be going back for another scoop. No one wants a double dipper. Getting the angle of the dangle right is very, very important. And I'm not talking about a guy specific thing here. I'm talking about that saddle that you've just spent all your hard earned pennies on. There's no point having a really expensive saddle if it's not set up correctly. Look at how it's angled and play around with it, trying different adjustments. You can even slide it forwards and backwards on the rails, sort of changing how the reach to the bars is. That's gonna adjust and tilt your pelvis sort of thing here and there and actually change where the pressure may be. By tilting the nose either up or down is gonna adjust where your weight is gonna sit on your seat bones. And uh, by doing this, really get things dialed in properly comfortable. 
The best way of doing this, well, I would suggest either have the bike sort of stationary lent up against the wall or in a, a like a turbo, a stand if you can, and just play around, just sort of sitting as you would on the bike, seeing how it feels, adjusting the reach and seat angle. Finally, saddle height then, and this is a good one to play around with in conjunction with adjusting the tilt, as when the saddle goes up and up, especially those with a dropper, uh, as the saddle raises, the angle of the saddle is going to change. Ideally, you would get the right saddle height when the dropper is extended to its highest. Now, generally speaking, you're gonna to want to have it set up so that when your saddle is at its most extended or at its highest point, there should be a slight bend in your leg when it's the pedal is at, obviously at the lowest point. If the saddle is too high, you'll find both legs are too stretched when pedaling, and what's gonna happen is you're just gonna rock on your pelvis, and that's obviously gonna cause a lot of sores that way. So just, if you're finding that's happening, drop the seat down incrementally until you've got it to the right point. Now the same can be said for having your saddle too low. Not only is that gonna put unwanted pressure on your knees, but also it's gonna make you very crunched up and again, change where that pressure is sitting. There is an optimal point, you've got to find out where that is just by having a play and an experiment. It generally might take a couple of rides for this to happen, but persevere, I promise that'll pay off in making your rides much comfier in the future. So that's it then, some helpful hints to hopefully help you stop getting a sore booty after your next epic or even if you're planning one to prevent it from happening and uh, not entering in a whole world of pain. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, don't forget, give us the thumbs up and hit subscribe for more great GMBN content. And I look forward to catching you, hopefully a lot less sore on the trails next time. Thanks everybody.